Okay, I know it's not the time to travel. No one of us is traveling or is allowed to travel or at least not as freely as we're used to. Nevertheless, I wanted to show you a travel-friendly video and photography equipment combination, let's say, if you are like me and you ride a motorcycle or a bicycle and you need to pack as compact and lightweight as possible. So I'm currently filming on two cameras. Let me switch to the other camera, which is my OnePlus 7 Pro in combination with a moment lens, an ND filter and a Peak Design tripod all in the new remote equipment Charlie 25. So this video is all about a very compact and lightweight travel friendly video and photography solution. Okay, before we start this video, I need to inform you that Moment Lenses and that Peak Design gave me both of these products for free to review. But it is very important for you to know that everything that I say in this video review is my own opinion. Most of you who know my videos know that I like to review items by telling you all of the negatives of that specific items. Because I personally believe that if you are interested in a product, you already know all of the positives and features from the website itself. So for you or for me personally as a consumer, it's easier to evaluate if I can live or work around specific negative flaws of that item. Therefore, I like to showcase all of the negatives of that specific items, even if they maybe seem a little bit nitpicky. So Peak Design and Moment Lenses agreed to A, letting me say my own honest opinion and B, more importantly, are totally fine with me telling you all of the negatives of these items. So with that out of the way, let's check out all of the positives and obviously all of the negatives of this specific travel-friendly video setup. Okay, the very first item in this travel-friendly photography and videography set would be the phone together with the moment lenses. I have a couple of them, but before we go into why this is a good idea to shoot with your phone, I need to preface something first. Hello everyone, Future Bo here. The next part in this video is actually pretty ironic. I made a very rookie mistake. As you know, I shoot all my videos by myself. That means as soon as I push record and stand in front of the camera, I have no way of actually monitoring my audio. And after I finish the recording, my camera doesn't have a headphone output to actually properly check the audio. For some reason, I think it was during my ride on the bicycle, I accidentally hit the DB gain button on my left mic and that is why the next part or almost everything that you hear in this video is slightly distorted. It's still better than the onboard audio of the phone's microphone but still it's yeah it was a rookie mistake and I'm really sorry that the audio is slightly distorted in the rest of this video. Sorry about that but I hope you can still slightly enjoy the video. I need to preface something first. The very first thing is that many people overlook is the sound. When you are shooting with your phone or even with a good camera, if the sound is not great, the viewer subconsciously recognizes this and judges the whole video overall as 
bad experience. Therefore, it is very important that if you are shooting with a phone that you use a high quality mic that is either connected to the phone itself or like I do to the Zoom H4n Pro external recorder. And the mic that I'm using at the moment is the Rode Left Mic Go, which is a very small and compact left mic that you can use on your camera or on your phone. Just for comparison, I will switch off the sound from the mic now and you can hear me right at the moment, probably not that loud on my phone. And now I switch back to my left mic. And as you can tell, there is a big difference between the two sound qualities. So if you're using a high quality mic in combination with your phone, the viewer will perceive the video overall as a good experience and probably doesn't really notice that the video is shot on the phone. On the flip side, if you're using a really good camera like a DSLR or even a RED camera for that matter and the sound is terrible because only the onboard mic is being used, then it doesn't matter if the camera is a high quality camera. If the sound is terrible, the viewer will pick that up and at least subconsciously won't like the video that much. So long story short, if you're thinking about making videos, then I would say go with your phone, but invest in high quality audio gear first. So let's go over my phone together with the Moment lenses. I'm using the OnePlus 7 Pro with the Moment lenses. And like most of the phones nowadays, the OnePlus 7 Pro has multiple lenses, a wide angle lens, the standard lens and a tele lens. And the question probably that you're asking yourself is now, why don't I just use those extra lenses to shoot video? First and foremost, not every phone lets you shoot video with all of the lenses. For instance, the OnePlus Plus 7 Pro only allows you to shoot with the standard and the wide angle lens. Secondly, those extra lenses usually don't yield in that great of an image quality compared to the standard lens. So having the moment lenses adapted onto your standard lens will give you a wider array of a field of view while still keeping the great image quality of the standard lens. And the next reason why it is a great idea to use moment lenses is that you can adapt an ND filter onto the lens. ND filters are basically sunglasses for your lenses or for your camera. If you're shooting in bright sunlight, your camera needs to adapt to this light conditions and has to change some of the settings to shoot video. If you're shooting video, it's really important that you shoot with the 180 degree shutter rule, which means that if you're shooting with 24 frames per second, your shutter needs to be based on that frames per seconds. With 24 frames per seconds, you need to shoot with one 48th of a second as your shutter. If you're shooting with 30 frames per second, your shutter needs to be 1 60th of a second. This ensures that all of the motion inside that video has this cinematic feel to it. And this is not possible if you're not shooting with an ND filter because the aperture on phones is usually fixed. So you can only adjust the ISO and the shutter. So if you want to keep the shutter speed at that specific specific speed, you need to adjust the light coming into your phone, which you can do with an ND filter. If you don't use an ND filter, everything is too bright and overblown. So those were the positives of using moment lenses on your phone. Furthermore, these lenses are really high quality made. This is aluminium and I'm using the 18 millimeters. I have a fish eye, which I don't use for filming, but for shooting stills for photography, this is great. And I have the anamorphic lens. And at the moment, the tele lens is filming me. So there are a lot of benefits with the moment lenses. What are the negatives? Obviously, these are quite pricey. These aren't really cheap. Furthermore, you need a case for your phone to attach these lenses. The case is very bulky and makes using your phone not that great if you already have a big phone. The case itself adds a lot of heft and bulkiness to your big phone. Usually I like to keep the case in my backpack and then whenever I want to shoot with the moment lenses, I just attach the case to my phone. And that's probably another negative of using these lenses. Attaching or mounting all of the stuff that you actually need to film with the moments lenses and the ND filter, it's quite a hassle. You need to attach the case 
if you're like me and don't like to have the case on the phone at all times, then you need to attach the ND filter to the lens itself and then the lens to the phone. That's quite some steps just to take a picture or just to shoot a video. And if you compare that to a regular point and shoot camera or a mirrorless camera that I'm usually using, the Sony a6300, it's much more easier to just take out your camera, switch it on, maybe adjust the ND filter that is already attached to the lens and then just shoot away. But if you keep in mind that this is supposed to be a travel friendly solution, so you only carry your phone that you always carry anyways when you're traveling or when you are just on the road and then just put in this small little lens in your pocket at least if you want to shoot still photography if you want to shoot video obviously you also carry the ND filter but that together one lens the ND filter and the phone that you carry anyways is much less compared to your phone that you as I mentioned, carry anyways, and a dedicated camera like the Sony mirrorless camera or maybe a point and shoot. It's way less in your pocket to take care of. All right, I know the angle isn't that great right now because the next thing that I'm showing you is the tripod and I had to mount the phone on this table. So yeah, the next item in this travel friendly kit is the Peak Design tripod. As you can see here, I changed the tripod a little bit. I attached the Manfrotto video head on here. Reason being is that almost everything that I have in my camera gear set is connected to a Manfrotto quick release mount. So my Ronin D DJI SC, this video head obviously, the small little handy tripod that I use for vlogging, all of them have a Manfrotto quick release mount and changing all of these pieces of gear to the Peak Design quick release head wouldn't make that much sense to me. So I added this Manfrotto video head which does add some weight to it but the Peak Design travel tripod, this is the carbon fiber version, is already so light that it's still overall much lighter than my other tripod that I have used in the past and that's probably the very first and most important reason for this tripod being in a travel friendly videography or stills photography setup. This is so small, so compact and so lightweight that it fits easily in my backpack and I don't feel it that much. I don't know the exact weight with this hat but I will super and pose it somewhere around here. That's probably the main reason why I can highly suggest this tripod. It folds up really nicely to a very compact size because these legs have this almost triangular shape to it. So once it folds up, it has a very smooth, compact and very packable footprint. But there's one negative coming already with this type of design of the legs, which is these four clasps on every leg. They are okay, they work really well. You can just open them up to expand the legs and just close them up like this and close these clasps. But I feel like there's no particular reason why I don't like them, but there are some, let's say, faster ways to open and close this. I would say for me, it's a personal preference. I prefer those where you just can twist the opening and closing of these legs. But obviously because this has this triangular or edgy shape to it, this is not possible to have these twisty close mechanisms. But in terms of functionality, there is not much negative to say about this. You can easily expand this and collapse it again and put it in your backpack. That being said, because it is so small and so compact, it doesn't go that high compared to other tripods. I'm only 170 centimeters tall, so that's about 5'5". Five five. It's not that big of a deal that this is, isn't that high. But maybe if you're a very tall person, this could come into play. The next negative, and that's probably the most important negative, this is very expensive. At least compared to other tripods, especially because this is the carbon fiber version. I like to ride the motorcycle, I own a motorcycle, and I would love to have more carbon fiber on my motorcycle. 
Therefore, I know how expensive carbon fiber can get. This being totally made out of carbon fiber, the overall build quality is great. And with that, there comes a very high price tag. I'm not sure how much it is in USA, uh, in Europe and in Asia, but I will superimpose it also somewhere around here. And if you compare that to other tripods, like the Manfrotto B3 and competitors on Amazon, they are much cheaper tripods that have a similar sizing so you really need to know what you get yourself into if you spend the money I feel like it is well spent it is a great tripod it is very well made usability is great and by usability I think the most important factor is the size and the weight of this because I personally when I'm riding a motorcycle when I'm walking around I don't want to have that much weight in my backpack and having this very lightweight tripod makes me very confident that I will pack it, that I will bring it along and therefore take shots, film a little bit with this tripod. But I would totally understand if you would say, oh wow, that's very cost intensive and there are much cheaper alternatives out there. Would totally understand that and totally reasonable to be quite honest. All right, back in the studio, back on the Sony A6300. Sorry again for the distorted audio. I can't deny that this video was a little bit more complicated than I anticipated. I shot this video over multiple days. I made a couple of rookie mistakes and the post-processing wasn't as streamlined as I'm used to. So bottom line, shooting on your phone will require some extra work. Be it attaching all of the extra equipment like lenses, ND filters, mics, etc. to the camera or using special apps like Filmic Pro to gain manual exposure or logarithmic color profiles. However, that being said, if you're a viewer of this channel, you are into traveling and backpacks or bags in general. And with that comes a certain affinity to packing efficiently, compact or lightweight, potentially all three of them. And a videographer or a professional photographer might scoff at the idea of shooting with a phone and having to deal with all of these attachments because you want all the ergonomics, all the image quality and the benefits of a camera. But but for a traveler, there is a very important argument and you can't deny that having just a phone with one or two moment lenses is much more lightweight and compact than a dedicated camera. And even if you only use a small point and shoot camera, you still have to carry that point and shoot camera in addition to your phone that you carry anyway. So having a phone with a lens or having a phone and a point and shoot, those might be some important, albeit quite few centimeters or few grams in your backpack that you might need for something else. So yeah, for a traveler, all of these items, shooting on your phone with moment lenses or having the very compact and lightweight Peak Design travel tripod might be a very good solution if you're traveling with just one bag or if you're on a motorcycle and there's not much space. But I can't deny the very expensive price tag. So yeah, it really is something you need to consider. There are alternatives, as I mentioned, for the Peak Design Travel Tripod. There is the Manfrotto B3. It's slightly bigger, but has approximately the same weight. So yeah, bottom line, it's some very expensive combination, but that price tag comes with a specific benefit in terms of weight and size. So yeah, what do you think about A, the image quality that you have seen in this video? And yeah, would you consider investing in this kind of equipment with the benefit of having less weight and less space in your backpack so you can actually carry all of that equipment to travel and film all of the places that you are traveling to. Let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, like always, if you have any more questions, also comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss the next videos. Thank you very much. Oh,